Well, we're, we're talking with Brian Matlaga, Associate Professor of Virology at Johns Hopkins, uh, about ureteroscopy and shockwave lymphotripsy today. You know, Brian, how do you decide between ureteroscopy and shockwave? I think the decision making is, is oftentimes very challenging um, because so much of what we try to do now in, in urology is, is leverage our understanding of the evidence to, to guide uh, and counsel our patients. And um, uh, with shockwave lithotripsy ureteroscopy, it's a, it's a complex discussion because the evidence in, in some regards uh, can be viewed as conflicting um, or certainly unresolved in some clinical scenarios and there aren't necessarily great guidelines to, to, to um, help advise us. And so um, it's a decision that um, you, know, you really have to involve the patient with um, to understand their expectations of uh, the outcome. and to understand the relative advantages and disadvantages of each surgical approach, <clears throat> which um, you know, which they're very different. Shockwave lithotripsy is, is typically a completely non-invasive modality that may have um, success rates that are a little bit lower than ureteroscopy, uh, but ureteroscopy is a little bit more invasive. Sometimes patient biases will uh, will drive that. Um, you know, does the patient want to maximize the, the chance of a, a successful outcome of a single procedure? Would they rather have a non-invasive procedure? So, so it's really helping to educate the patients um, so they can really understand what their own desires are as far as um, the, the outcome they would prefer.